What is Beethoven doing right now? Decomposing. What? Too soon? Grab a jam, I swear. This is a town of my podcast. This guy's insane. Rock to bring. It's just as old as Steve here. I'm All right, Schmacka McGob, there's, we're going to continue, and they're right here with me. I have here, uh, introduce yourself, guys, starting with uh, the rock and or roll guy, and, and throw it to somebody else. I, this is Brian BJ Kahuna Cramp. <laughs> yeah. And, my, and I'm here with my co-host from Cheap Talk. That's me, Ken Mills, the pod father, the man of a thousand podcasts. And you know, there's a really cool book called Still Competition, and the author is Robert Lawson. Say hello, Robert. Hey, I'm here uh, joining the guys to talk about uh, all of our favorite Cheap Trick albums. All right. Now we're going to, now they, they finally leave uh, Tom Warman to go with Sir George Martin. Uh, yes. From the Beatles, uh, producer of the Beatles, with uh, the album All Shook Up. Now I'll take this one. I, I just want to give you a little brief history. When I first got this album, I fell in love with it, but all my friends hated it. They all thought, oh, they're going new wave, fuck cheap trick. Because really, at the time, uh, and you guys can agree with me that you were back then, I think cheap trick at that time was suffering a little bit too much overexposure. And yeah. and it, it kind of hurt them by the time Dream Police was done and, and they went into the studio. They didn't have... Because, man, during during the Budokan and... and, and and he, shit, even up to all shook, uh, found all the parts, which we should talk about. Um, there, it was like the planets aligned. You know, Cheap Trick was just the perfect band for the perfect time. Where all shook up, people started to look at Van Halen and other bands, kind of taking away the spotlight. But I fell in love with this album the first time I heard it, and uh, yeah, I had a lot of people. I, I didn't know anybody that liked it. Everybody was like, "Oh, Baby Loves to Rock" is the only good song on there. You know, it's like. And I was like, oh, man, I think the album rules. Now, I admit, it does wane toward the end. Uh, and this is the first Cheap Trick album, in my opinion, that has songs I didn't like. You know, because I loved every song before this. And, right. uh, but, uh, and I saw the tour with the big eye during High Priest of Rhythmic Noise. Well, yeah, I've, I've seen every tour Cheap Trick did after I, at Budokan. And uh, I think this is a, an amazing album. And there was a period in my life where I was being countercultural, telling everybody, no, nah, the best album's all shook up. You know, kind of like how people go, ah, oh, the best Brian Johnson albums for those about to rock, flick of the switch. Come on, who are you bullshitting here? You're just being countercultural. Um, <laughs> it's Back in Black, come on. I don't care how burnt out you are on Back in Black. It's a better album than those two. And I don't, I don't ever, ever, like, judge anybody's musical opinion, but there are exceptions. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I don't say, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, <laughs> except now. How about you, BJ? What's better, Back in Black, or for those about to rock, or, or, or All Shook Up? I mean, um, All Shook Up. Listen to me. Um, flick of the switch. Yeah, I'm gonna be countercultural. Yeah, I figured Back in Black's <laughs> overrated. <laughs> wow. Well, some and, people are cunts. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pick uh, Razor's Edge. <laughs> Oh, that, that is my least favorite. Oh, I'm up right yeah, I'm kidding, that's, but I, li I like songs on there. But That's my least favorite ACDC album, and for you to say that that's your favorite makes me like you no, even I'm more. Kidding. I definitely like it for those about the rock. I enjoy listening to for those about the rock all the way through more than I enjoy listening to back and black all the way through. Okay. That's for sure. All that's right. Countercultural. I get it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, and by the way, I'm not going to ask you other two. I, I'm just focusing on BJ here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Don't get me but, started on ACDC. <laughs> all right. Well, that, you know, all right. Uh, we already talked about all shook up. Uh, I mean, I did, uh, but I also want to, I also want to go ahead. Listen, listen, you know, you're talking about how your friends by the time that All Shook Up came out and going New Wave. There's also the fact that they were now in 16 Magazine. Uh, remember, they wound up being a joke in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. All that hear, stuff has yeah. to be taken into account. Van Halen came out. Punk came out. And depending on which of those two camps you loved, everything else was a joke. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And and you nailed it. The 60 magazine, it's that overexposureness. Yeah. It kills a lot of bands. Like, you know, Twist yeah. Sister was everywhere. I was like, oh, I don't want to look at these guys anymore. Listen, and, when you have your own view master, you're not cool in rock and roll anymore. It's just it goes that fast. <laughs> With Pete Comita. Yeah. Yeah. Uh um well well, Ken, what do you think of All Shook Up? I think that uh, the first two thirds of the album is really good, and it turns into a shit storm. Uh, you know, you kind of wonder if George Martin hadn't agreed to work with them, if they would have re-upped with Tom Werman. You know, you kind of wonder what that reality would look like, right? Uh, but to get a chance to work with George Martin as a Beatle fan, like, yes. Anytime I can, right? So let's do this. And it's weird for such what should have been a perfect marriage didn't really uh, produce such great fruit, if you will. Uh, there's some stuff that's just amazing, but just imagine of what George Martin might have done with some better material, right? Yeah, but but this is great material, though, man. Oh, it is. It is, but it's not as good as. The first album with Dream Police. You know what I'm saying? I got I'm not. I'm not knocking the album, but listen. At this point, Rick has just like exhausted 50 great songs, right? So yeah. now it's like you get a chance to work with George Martin, and you're not bringing your A game. It, it had to be frustrating because, as much as I love the songs on All Shook Up. I think that we can all say that it's it's the little brother to the first four albums, right? Right. Well, I, I get you. I mean, just I, you know, and I'm not talking about performances. I'm talking about songwriting quality. I get. I get what you're saying. You know, I, it's just I went through a phase saying, "Oh man, all shook up's the best." You know, I, I was kind of like BJ with all uh, for those about to rock back then. Right. Right. <laughs> But like, but like, just imagine you finally get a chance to work with George Martin, and you're handing him songs about robots, and <laughs> yeah. you know he's but, like, "What? The, what's going on here?" You know. But I think all all shook up is also a great example of why people who love Cheap Trick really love the band because this album is fucking insane and weird and not at all what you would expect, and, and that's so, what we love about it. Yeah, that's what we love about them at the same time. Is this is album is full of Rick Nielsen's just weirdness and and then yeah, this he he gets to work with George Martin and he makes this fucking nutty record. And you got to <laughs> kind of appreciate that, you know. <laughs> yeah. You have to. I got I got a question for you guys. Um we know we all know the every, all the way up to Dream Police, there are, you know, pieces of old songs. Is right. this one completely fresh? Did they bring World's anything from the lover. past on here? World's uh, Greatest Lover is old. Okay. That's it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Which is, it's... oddly enough, the most George Martin-esque Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah well, it's song. like John Lennon, yeah. 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 Which is probably why they said, okay, let's do this. We got George Martin, you know? Yeah. Um, well, how about, uh, Robert, what do you think of All Shook Up? Uh, I love it. When it came, I don't play it a lot now, but uh, when it first came out, boy, was I into it just like you, Ralph. And I, uh, there was something about it that really appealed to me, even though I'm not really into robots or much of a science fiction kind of guy. But uh, something about just everything, the way it came together, I didn't really, you know, it's funny you, you got off onto an ACDC tangent there, and there's two ACDC connections to this album. One is that World's Greatest Lover actually starts with a little piano intro that uh, is the song Big Balls Big by ACDC. Yeah, yeah. And that they mention, uh, you know, Bond is sort of attributed to And Love Comes a Tumbling Down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's a line, there's a line in that song. It wasn't, it was Johnny Be Good, but it wasn't so great. And that's uh, from the, when they played Johnny Be Good with. Uh, you know, I'm a little confused. It's Cheap Trick with Angus and Bond doing uh, that song, right? Yeah. Johnny Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and they did. That, a, yeah. They did. They did yeah. other. They did other songs too, though, and that that doesn't get talked about too much. I'm. I i do not know what page it is in my book, but uh, Bond told me himself that 
yeah, it's Bon and Angus for Johnny Be Good, but then Malcolm came out, and I think all three of them did something with Cheap Trick, and then only Malcolm stayed for like one more song or something. Mm, it's in the it's it's in the book somewhere. I don't know where. Uh, BJ, did you talk about all shook up? Yeah, I just talked about how you know how, how weird it is, and that's what we love about Cheap Trick is that they go off on these kind of tangents. They're just like, where the fuck did this come from? You know? Right. And what will be your favorite and least favorite off this one? My favorite is Can't Stop It, But I'm Gonna Try, which I really love. I love that song. It's really great. And I guess, it does Huda King count? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let, let, come on. And and look, <laughs> if it's... We're not gonna add Huda King because it, it'll be unanimous. So I know... I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, the two songs before it are the contenders, right? Yeah, I love you, honey, but I hate your friends is probably my least favorite, even though the guitar solo of Reach Out is the same melody. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, guys, hey, guys, I just found that thing I was talking about. So, Bon Scott joins the band for Day Tripper. I oh, need to hear that. Yes. BJ. <laughs> and, and then Angus and Malcolm come out so you got all three of them doing Johnny Be Good, and that's of course on one of Bun's bootleg uh, CDs. And then the the show ended with just Malcolm with ACDC doing Off Wiedersehen. Oh Ooh. wow! So, awesome. J- yeah. J- July seventh. Let's track that down. <laughs> Damn. Nineteen seventy nine. And you see, I didn't know Malcolm was part of uh, Johnny Be Good. I always thought it was just a Bon and Angus. No, they. It's mentioned on the uh, on the sleeve, or on the actual disc for the Buns bootleg. Uh, it's called right. Jam. It's called Jammin' with Bond, Malcolm, and Angus. They don't even say that it's Johnny Be Good, but that's just because Buns bootleg series. They kind of make up funny names for all the songs, which is frustrating. I I never I never owned it though I have it now thanks to somebody who sent me all of them. But uh, right, yeah, I wasn't aware that Bunny was selling those back when he was. Oh okay. um, yeah. Well, uh, did you talk about your favorite and least favorite, um, Robert? Uh, I don't think I did, but I, well, yeah, least favorite. I think we're in, everyone's in agreement on that. But uh, I love uh, World's Greatest Lover. Stop this game. Might be, geez, Baby Loves to Rock. I don't know. I there's a, There's a lot on this record that I really love. All right, so in other words, you don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here let, let let me throw a dart at the. Uh, yeah, throw a dart at yeah. it. I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, baby loves to rock. Okay, how about you, Ken? Uh, well, since I can't pick who to king, right? Um, I love you, honey, but I hate your friends is least favorite. And my favorite, I'm gonna go with just got back. Mm. It, yeah. it it it's one of those things like. This guy just got out of prison or whatever. What did he do? Is he a psycho? What's going on here? But it's one of those possibly dangerous songs from Cheap Trick, and I love it. I- I'll tell you a funny story about Just Got Back. When I saw them, uh, right before Lap of Luxury came out, they played this club down here called City Limits, and they opened with Just Got Back. And I'm like rocking. I'm like, because they haven't played Just Got Back in quite a while. So I was so happy. Right. And while I'm going crazy, I look up and I'm like, Wait a second, that's Tom Peterson. You know, I didn't even know he was back. That was a great, <laughs> great show. You know, I was like, oh my God, Tom Peterson's there. Um, my my favorite on here, hands down, is Who the King, man. I don't know what's wrong with any of you guys. <laughs> now, actually, uh, I gotta go with BJ. I can't believe I'm agreeing with BJ so much. But that's gonna that's gonna stop after this album, I'm sure. Uh, but man, can't stop it, but I'm gonna try it is a masterpiece. Oh, and I, I really love I love when they do it on Saturday Night Live when the band stops. Yeah. And Robin yeah. Talked. I just love that yeah. shit. And my Me least too. favorite would be uh, actually go for the throat. I, w- I would put uh, I Love You Honey over that one. But like I said, this album after Love Comes Tumbling Down just takes a dip where the last three songs were like the first time, in my opinion, were like, wow, this is not like, you know, mind blowing or it didn't really stick to me. Like every single song. Uh, from Dream Police down, you know, and uh, we, even though we skipped it real quick, um, man, found all the parts is so amazing. Um, yes, 
Uh, yeah, it's the first time I ever heard um, Can't Hold On and Can't Hold On Again would have to be in my top five. Unbelievable. Favorite Such a Good Girl is one of their best songs, too. I was going to bring that up. Just a Good Girl has to be the most perfect power pop song ever written. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank, and my thank, all, Go ahead. Thank God for Good Girls. Yes. And uh, well, I like Bad Girls more. But <laughs> I, I, my all time favorite ballad from Cheap Trick is, um, oh my God. <laughs> I can't remember it now. Take, Take me on the arm of yours. There you go. That's my favorite ballad. And I think maybe it's because I got a little Cuban blood on in me, and there's a Latin, little Latin flavor to that song. But it's just so beautifully done. But yeah, man, you you all in agreement, man. It's just a great cover of Jay Tripper. It's just a perfect little uh, EP. It's a tiny, tiny EP. It's not even right. the size of an EP. It's so that great. Is yeah. on, on new disc, and uh, mine had Bunny Carlos on both sides. But every other copy had like you know different members because I ended up buying, um, found all the parts later where I had Rick and Tom on the other side, so I never had the one with uh, and mine did not originally come with the forty five of uh, everything really? worked if you had it. No, it wasn't until I bought it again because I, man, my original copy is unplayable. You know I played it so much on crappy turntables and uh, I found it again in pristine condition. And it brought in the single. I was like, hey, what's this? And everybody else I've talked to said, they all came like that. I go, dude, I bought that album, that little EP when it was brand new. And it was not in mine, you know. But are we all in agreement? Every single song on this is great. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's It's a real fun little record. Oh, yeah. All right. now, Now is when me and BJ go to war. (laughs) <laughs> oh because this this is where the dark period starts for me. Actually, I never I never heard one on one till years later, and really? I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I don't know why I didn't acquire it. I mean, I was so into Cheap Trick up to that point. I don't know if it was word of mouth or what it was, but I just didn't care. I did not care anymore, and I never even bothered to buy on one on one later. And what makes it even weirder was when I saw She's Tight and uh, and uh, If You Want My Love on MTV, I was like, man, I like these songs. And I still didn't go buy the album. I'm a strange fella. I was going through, I, I guess it was a dark period. It, to me, back then, I think the main thing was, if it ain't metal, it's crap. You know, I went through that right. phase. It's metal, metal. You know, I stopped listening to Kiss. I stopped listening to Cheap Trick and ELO and Kansas and all the bands you that mean- I love. Huh? You mean good music? <laughs> yeah, well, still metal, bro. Metal rules, bro. I but know, uh, I know. well, then I went back and heard this album, and uh, completely horrified. I don't like it. <laughs> there is three songs I like on here. Um, I, of course, the two singles and "Looking Out for Number One." Uh, I mm-hmm. love that song actually, but the rest of this album. And when I hear people say this is their metal album. All I can think about why is because Robin screams a lot on it because musically, it's not that metal to me, you know? Right. But that's my opinion. BJ, do you like One on One? Oh, I love it. I Hell love this yeah. album. That's what I want to hear. Got a couple clunkers. Saturday at Midnight, Four Letter Word. Ugh. But I love most of it. Um, I, I think that looking up for number one is so heavy. It's kind of got a metal feel and one-on-one's real riffy song so you know it's like we were talking about all shook up that's how they they work with george martin and that's what they end up with and then on this they work with roy thomas baker most famous for queen and the cars and then they end up with something that you would never expect from that collaboration either you know right but uh i I think the songs are great it's a really fun album i i really love it what, it's one what, of my favorite what, Cheap Trick albums, for sure. Would you put this one above any album we talked about already? Probably, yeah. Oh <laughs> I think God. I like it more than Heaven Tonight. Okay. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Security. <laughs> well, I like it more than All Shook Up. I like it more than All Shook Up, for sure. Um, oh, why, my God. Why, why do I enjoy it? Pe- most people don't like when people disagree like that. I enjoy it. <laughs> I really do get a charge out of that. Some it's, suck, called, 
But that's awesome that you love it. You know? Well, this album is part of me falling in love with Cheap Trick. It's, it's like I knew, you know, I, as I got the albums, like it, when you only know, you know, Surrender and maybe like the Dream Police record, and then you get the first album, you're like, holy shit. And then this, it was the same with getting this record and just not even, I'm like, oh, oh my God, this band is the greatest band ever. You know, once you start going deeper into the catalog, that's how it worked for me. So, so, so did you have the first album before One on One? Yeah, I think I did. I don't really remember what order I got them in, but probably. Well, One on One was one of your first ones. No, but I just remember as you as I kept getting more cheap trick albums and just realizing they were so much more than just I want you to want me and surrender. You know, that was. Yeah. Right. Uh, Robert, what do you think of one on one? I got into it late. I, I I guess I wasn't really following the band anymore at that point. Uh, so I I like it. Uh, I don't love it. There's there's definitely some highlights on it. I like uh, Ooh La La and She's yeah. Tight is a lot of fun. I love how Robin is playing two different characters in the song and he just keeps going back and forth really quickly. And I don't doubt that he uh, did that live in the studio. But uh, yeah, like Time is Running and Saturday at Midnight. and oh, well, Time is Running is amazing. I love well, that. Well, if the cars recorded it, I'm sure it would be great. Oh, that's great. But... Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, I, I I want yes. be man, and it just it doesn't really grab me uh, the way that every album up to this point had. All what right. About, what, about, what about four letter word that just sounds like they're ripping off the Billy Squire the stroke? Yeah, the stroke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's yeah. insane. That. That, there wasn't a lawsuit about that. Like when, and I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about Billy Squire, but for Rick Nielsen and Robin Zander to be ripping him off, something's not right in the world. Yeah, I think I did a mashup on the ep- the Cheap Talk episode of those two songs. Oh, I, I don't remember that. I gotta, I gotta look for that. I don't think you did, liar. I think I did. Maybe well, Ken, Ken cut maybe it out. Yeah, it I said, didn't make it there. Well. You know, it seems like the drop in quality that was at the end of All Shook Up winds up here as well. Uh, It seems like, you know, credit where credit is due, he did a song about robots before Kilroy was here for Sticks, right, BJ? So, uh, you know, kudos to Rick Nielsen for writing about uh, robots. But, you know, I Won't Be Man kind of suffers that same kind of thing. I don't know whether he's working on a, a full musical in his head or something. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, maybe. You I know, mean, it's got, it's, there's it's got, a lot I of. I want to live in your body part is great and kind of redeems the song, but. Yeah. But, but yeah, I Won't Be word. Man sounds like all shook up. That's what's funny. Yeah, exactly. It does. It does. And I think that if you took the best off All Shook Up and the best off of One on One, that'd be an amazing album. But anyway, uh, but yeah, so it was it was different. I remember uh, driving around when it came out and we had it on cassette and we would play it for everybody because we wanted everybody to like Love Cheap Trick, you know. And people did like the singles, but that was about it. I love the first seven songs right straight through and then i also love love's got a hold on me so you've got eight songs that i love is that so, not the same trajectory as all shook up yeah they both kind of fizzle out at the end yeah yeah they both uh start off blazing and turn into a grip yeah i guess uh but you know obviously the reason you like it more than all shook up bj is because you think the songs are actually better even though it does wane so toward the end right Right? Yeah, yeah. Right on, right on. I think t- I think also my problem with this album is that, you know, just my change that I had and I never, like... But believe me, I have gone back on this. Like, as you know, I've been doing um, cheap trick reviews on my, on my YouTube channel where I listen to the album for a full month every single day, yeah. even more than once. And th- I think that's the best way to get into an album because... An album coming up, and I won't I won't spoil it what it is, but it's an album I really disliked, and BJ kept saying how great it was, and I was like, 
Oh yeah, of course. That's why I don't like it, you know. <laughs> and I lived with it for a month, and holy crap! I hate to say it, BJ was right. It's one of their best albums. I was like, wow. I know what you're album. talking about. <laughs> yeah, and I and I hated that album. I hated it. No, I actually hated it. It's a strong word. Uh, it was like, God, this album sounds like I should like it, but it's just not working. But it, it actually did. I'm glad it did. But we'll get to that in part two or three, whatever the fuck, because this is gonna be <laughs> knocked out in part. All right, so uh, all right, so we're okay. Favorite or least favorite, there, BJ. Yeah, the favorite is tough, but I'd probably go with looking up for number one. Yeah, and wow. least favorite is four letter word. I mean, that's a no brainer. All right, uh, I would say I would agree with you. Looking out for number one is my favorite, and I saw him play it. Like you know, I saw the tour, but they actually threw this about two years ago into the. Two, three years ago into the Settlers of Miami. Uh, my least favorite would be Saturday at Midnight. That song is like, what the fuck is this? True. <laughs> um, and uh, um, uh, Robert. Uh, I like uh, She's Tight. Like I said, it's a lot of fun. But looking out for number one, that's that's them like really rocking out at their best. So I'd go for that. For least favorite, geez, between four-letter word, I want B-Man and... Uh, I don't so know. At midnight. <laughs> oh yeah, that's uh, that's atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting that they reuse some of the lyrics from "Love and Money" in it. So I'm a little interested in it for that. But and it's also one of the few songs that John Brant's on. But no, it's it doesn't belong. It's hard to imagine if you listen to the first Cheap Trick record and then listening to something like that and thinking that it's even the same band. Right. I think but that's Saturday probably kind of more what you expected from Roy Thomas Baker. <laughs> yeah, right. I uh, really think the cheap trick were ahead of the curve on Saturday at midnight because it sounds like some new wave band from like 1988 or 87. Yeah, yeah right. a real <laughs> shitty new wave band from 87. <laughs> yeah. Well, that yeah, might be, but still, you know, if it wasn't cheap trick, it might be, a, I'd look at it differently. But because it's cheap trick, I go, yeah, you guys can do better. Yeah, they knew suck before it's time. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what will okay. be your favorite and least favorite there, Ken? If You Want My Love is my favorite song on the album. It's just grand and wonderful and amazing. Mm-hmm. Four, four letter word uh, pretty much suck. Okay, uh, the next one, uh, next position, please, is actually my favorite of the dark years for me. Uh, don't love this album, but I do think it's better than what come a few that come after and a, and a few that before. Um, I, again, I wasn't into Cheap Trick. I, I mean, I wasn't really into Cheap Trick buying their albums, but I couldn't resist going to see them live. And right. I remember when I went to go see them live and they played these songs live, I was like, whoa, this is good, man. It sounds like Cheap Trick to me, man. And then I bought the album and I was like, What? I mean, I just thought these songs were not, it did not translate well. Like, Borderline, I Can't Take It, Even I Don't Love Here Anymore, uh, sounded much better live in a live setting. There's just something, and I'm not a production guy, but I just feel like this this is a castrated version of these really good songs. But, you know, I did like, uh, there's songs, of course, I didn't like on here, but I like the little sappy ballad, Y-O-Y. I like the... Um, Heaven's Fallen, I absolutely love. And uh, I Can't Take It, Borderline, um, and I Don't Love Here Anymore. And Invader of the Heart, to an extent, there's some parts I didn't like about it, uh, were the songs I liked, and then the rest I can just throw away. Uh, hey, BJ, what do you think of this one? I, I like this album a lot. I do think that Todd Rundgren's production is arguable, whether or not it was... <laughs> the right way to you know to handle the band and the songs but the songs are good enough that i really like the album a lot and uh yeah so i i don't i don't like it as much as one on one quite but i like it a lot all right ken well you know i i was a big todd rungren fan and the thought of him working with Cheap Trick was just like, this is going to be awesome. When I got the record, 
it just sounded oily to me. And I can't really describe that in any other way. But it just, it just sound it just was so weird that it felt like it had an oil or a sheen to it that just made it not sound right. Does that make any sense to anybody? Uh, yeah, it does make t- perfect yeah. sense to me. I just think it's too slick. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I never would have put the slick with the oil, but yeah, I guess so. There's, well, yeah, you know. Uh, so, the, well, the guitar sound is just not Rick Nielsen. Oil slick. No, at all. And yeah, I, I mean, kind of wonder what band they were trying to sound like, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, this album is so slick. When I put the needle on, it just scratched all the way through it. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, and terrible. Of, and, and, of course, there's the secret message on the cover. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, we oh, have yeah. to talk about that. <laughs> Was it the number of the album, I think? Eight and no? a half, yeah. Okay, oh. let me let me say something. One of the most, and every, anyone listening to this, go back to the Cheap Talk episode where these guys talk about this album because they talk about, and, and <laughs> BJ knows where I'm going with this. Yeah. They're talking about the album cover and how Rick's holding up these weird fingers and they don't really, you, you hear it live. They don't really know what it is. And you can actually hear the gears in Brian's head. <laughs> and I finally, think he ended with what it said. It. Yeah, oh, it was, it was, when he yeah, goes, it was, hey, wait a second. It was their eight and a half album, if you consider <laughs> found all the parts. Like, and they a, were going to call a, it eight and a half. That that's was like right. The title, yeah. That's right. Yeah. But it's like you guys actually came to that realization live yeah, on the air his, while you're recording. He's got his pinky bent in half. Or he's got the <laughs> figure, yeah, so that it right. makes it eight and a half fingers he's holding up. Yeah, and we figured it out live on the podcast as we were right. recording. Yeah, <laughs> you can actually hear the gears turning in our little pathetic. Brains. And then we're just like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could be the first time that that was that anyone kind of came up with that. Like, yeah, I don't know right. if anyone had ever figured it out before, or if Rick I, had ever said it. You know, I I definitely had never read it before. I had heard, uh, I had heard that the album was supposed to be called that. Yeah. And so I so I got that that's why he was holding up those fingers, but I don't I never read anywhere somebody linking that together that eight and a half was because of how many albums they had out. That I don't I think you guys uh cracked that case. Yeah, because found all the parts is the half, yeah. That's right, yeah. You know, the same wow. thing happened to me uh when I was at uh, Rock and Pod last year, dressed as Vinnie Vincent, uh when I was live on the air with Ken Mills, that's when I I never noticed this before, but um, I, I noticed right then, out of the blue, I had no idea that uh, Ken Mills wanted me sexually. Huh. <laughs> again, again, I had a hunch. I didn't know. I had no idea. <laughs> the, right, the writing was on the wall. And let me tell you something, Ken. Nobody's ever better than you, man. What a night! Right. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, Robert, did you talk about this album? Oh yeah, you did. You just did, right? Did I? <laughs> oh well, talk about it. Uh, I don't like it as much as One on One. I Can't Take It is a fantastic uh, song. And uh, I do like the chorus in Why Oh Why. But uh, I, don't dig, I don't really like Todd Rundgren re- writing a song for them. I think, mm-hmm. that's, I think that's beneath Rick. Um, so it's okay, but it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely not, not a favorite album of mine. Uh, although I kind of link it a lot with One on One in my mind. And it's only when I play them both together and I realize that they're, they're not really joined in any way. What was what was the song on this album? I think I either heard this on on the pot on the trick uh, podcast or on your book. There was a song on here that Todd Rundgren was so against that he actually like didn't even have nothing to do with it. Dancing the night away. That's the yeah. one that the record company made them do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they got so they got Ian Taylor, who they had just done Spring Break with, and hmm. so he he produced that one song. And uh, uh, what would be your favorite and least favorite on here, Robert? Favorite is probably going to have to be I Can't Take It. Uh, I just love it. And uh, least favorite, I don't know, pick anything, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's in the night away is what Robert wants. Um, BJ. I probably have to say my favorite is Borderline. It's such a, a well-written song. The bridge is just one of my favorite parts of any Cheap Trick song ever. But Why Oh Why Oh Why is so good that I almost want to say that. Um, 
but yeah, Borderline is just amazing. I can imagine BJ, you uh, roller skating, listening to Borderline <laughs> with your arms outstretched during that one part, especially. <laughs> I can see it right now. So nah, can I. At, at, at Skateland, they played Borderline, but it was Madonna. Yeah. <laughs> Do a mashup but you, of that. But, but you were hearing this, right? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, Ken? Did you well, say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> There's a part of me that hates part of dancing the night away. So I'm going to go with that. But I also like the parts that remind me of the Beatles, believe it or not. There's that one part in it. But uh, I'm going to go with I Can't Take It as my favorite song. It 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 earns its keep. It is unavoidable, amazing, and I sing it about twice a week. Nice. All right. Uh, wow. That's, that's kind of difficult because I think I Can't Take It is probably one of the hardest Robin Zander vocals. I mean, that's very difficult what he does in that song and it's also my favorite very close to heaven's fallen but the only reason i won't go with heaven's fallen is because of that production you know the, the way that song starts at dee 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 that that guitar sound it's like ah oh, and the clapping and but it's such a great song that if it was a little less slick i mean much less slick i probably that would probably be my favorite one but uh my least favorite uh, you know what? I don't even remember some of these songs now. I guess you say "Jump." That's the one that sounded like "I Want You to Want Me," right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd say that one. You say "Jump" would probably be my least favorite. That or that "Dance the Night Away" one. All right, the next one, and boy, me and me, I, I don't even know what BJ thinks about this album, but I'm sure he differs with me because, in my opinion, "Standing on the Edge" is the worst. Cheap Trick album. <laughs> I prefer The Doctor. <laughs> I'm telling you, and when it comes to picking a favorite song on here, I know which one I'm going to pick, but it's like, I don't really like that much either. But I do have a favorite on here, but this is one that, man, and, and this is one, I got to tell you, I bought it when it was new because I had a feeling. I said, you know what? Cheap Trick's got to do a great album by now, you know? <laughs> and oh man it was like fuck i didn't like anything off this and i still don't when i did the review on this again i lived with it for a month there is a couple songs that did grow on me but but not to the point where i would go back and listen to this album i really dislike this album and i would say that um it's my least favorite how about you bj i love half the album there are some very misguided songs on the record, and it's very unfortunate that Jack Douglas didn't actually produce the album. Yeah. It definitely has some production problems, but yeah, Standing on the Edge, How About You, This Time Around, Tonight It's You, all amazing songs, in my you opinion. Didn't, you didn't like Love Comes? Love Comes is good. Yeah, that one kind of grew on me. You know, the last three songs on the record, well, Cover Girl is good. You know, but I mean, Rock All Night, Wild oh, Wild Jesus. are terrible. She's Got Motion is bad. So it's got, you know, it's, it's got some dark spots, but I really love some of the songs. Hmm. Interesting. How about you, Ken? Well, this is where I see a great band diluted. Not only is it the original lineup dispersed at this point, but we're seeing the, we're seeing a ton of, uh, soundtrack work being done right and mm -hmm. where we should have had more work being done on albums we're seeing more time spent on soundtracks and you know that that may not seem like it's a bad problem because that was a big way to earn a fast buck but it also i feel took away from the time in the studio and planning an album and the initial run of the genius of Rick Nielsen is now spread too thin. And uh, I think that it hurts the band, right? Uh, I thought the album cover was horrible. You don't really know what's going on. It's a blur. That's the album cover, a blur. 
Isn't Again, it kind of like a tribute to Born to Run? That's next to this, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's next Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot. But, but, sorry. But, sorry. But, like, it <laughs> seems like the record company really wants Cheap Trick to be a new wave band. Yeah. You know what I mean? They really want them to be on first wave on Sirius XM. It, they really want this to be the new cheap trick is to be a new wave band. And this, you know, this looks like something that if you were like a new wave band from LA, that would have been a, or, or from England, it would have been a great album cover, but for cheap trick, someone as visually interesting and arresting as cheap trick dream police pun there. You, you just don't put a blur up on your cover. It's ridiculous. But having said that the music inside is about the same way. There's moments of brilliance, but let, a lot of it's a blur and not even a fun blur. Uh, again, really like the album, but what's not quality is not quality. You, you can only make out Robin Zander on that album, really. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> Robert. Yeah. Um, I, I did buy this album when it first came out. So even though I skipped next position, please. And one-on-one for some reason, I did buy this. I don't know what I was expecting, but, uh, yeah, just lost, just a record company interference. You know, Bunny insisting that he's credited with acoustic drums, showing that he was not on board with all the drum machines and uh, electronic percussion that Tony Platt added to it. Uh, just horrible, horrible. Yeah. horrible. Yeah, you take a drummer like Bun, who is, Fuck especially at his Platt. peak, he's a great, great drummer. He's a really melodic, really interesting drummer where he puts his fills and stuff and we're going to replace him with a dr- drum machine. That's just a recipe for disaster right there. That's somebody I, making really poorly thought out decisions, I think. Um, so, uh, and Wild Wild Women being a Highway to Hell ripoff just bugs me so much. I know that the Cheap Trick guys were friends with ACDC. We already talked about them jamming on stage and mentioning them in songs. I think Cheap Trick could do a great tribute to Bon Scott or to ACDC if they really wanted to, but just ripping off Highway to Hell is not the way to do it. Right. Um, all right. I'll go with my favorite, at least favorite. Um, I'm going to say tonight it's you. Sure. Uh, and, but I don't like that little where come to my world where it just went somewhere else with that ding 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 ding. I was like, what? You know, take that part out. It would be a great, great song. But I mean. Compared to every other song on it, I know I'm wrong, dude. That's why I have you here to educate me with superior taste. Um, <laughs> but um, and love comes. I, I kind of you know that one grew on me. Um, my least favorite would definitely have to be Rock All Night. Um, <laughs> Jesus, it's like what is this? Twisted Sister meets Poison. It's yeah. like, and I love Twisted Sister by the way, but it's like you know come out and play Twisted Sister, and it's just. It's like, this is definitely, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't think of another song that is so uncheap tricked than rock all night. Cause it's so, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of songs, but this one like just sticks out the most to me because they're trying to be like a LA shitty hairband in yeah. this song, you know? And it's just, it just really bothers me to no end. Not that the rest of the album's any winners either, but I got to go about that one. That one is like, ugh. um, BJ did no BJ. I, I'm curious to know what's the real answer. Well, my favorite is the title track, "Standing on the Edge." I really, really love that song. And uh, least favorite <laughs> is kind of hard. I agree. Rock all night is so generic that it's just embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but wild, wild women is also the same. <laughs> so it's kind of a toss up. I guess wild, wild women is probably worse. Because Rock All Night is the one that they they uh, cannibalize Get Ready, right? Yeah. Um, yep. That was yeah, the exactly. side of Spring Break. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Get Ready is actually good, but then they just ruined it with that stupid chorus. But, yeah, they, but, they, yeah. Should, they should just re-record it, Get Ready. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I would put Wild Wild Women as the worst. All right. How about you, Robert? Uh... Yeah, tonight it's you. I I think it's wonderful. It should have been a huge hit. And uh, I I do hate rock all night because to me it sounds like the worst parts of a death 
Def Leppard. But Wild Wild Women is uh, just that doesn't belong on on this album. It's horrible. You know, I would probably pick Wild Wild Women. But I totally forgot how it went. But that <laughs> rock all night, man, it left an impression. <laughs> you know? Well, Ralph, here's the thing: Wild Wild Women sucks so bad that it was your mind trying to save what sanity you have by blocking it out. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. It's, it felt like you know how you touched me in Nashville. It's kind of like the service. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't charge you, so. <laughs> yeah, um, well, believe me, I would have been ripped off if you charged for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my picks, uh, In the Toilet, Wild Wild Women, and Tonight at You is my favorite song, though there are some great stuff like Standing on the Edge, Love Comes, This Time Around. How how This Time Around wasn't a big uh, 80s movie song. You know, it should mm-hmm. have been like the love theme from any movie in the 80s. It could have worked uh, that big moment. But, you know, you mentioned that one moment in um, Tonight It's You, Ralph, where it sounds like the psycho thing, you know, yeah, look with your eyes so I can see, you know, that part. Yeah. That to me, it's important that that's there because otherwise it's a generic love song and bj and i've talked about this before that one of the great things about cheat tricks ballads is there's always this fucking psychotic edge that comes out of nowhere like it's a love song and then all of a sudden you hear screech 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 (laughs) (laughs) yeah some bit of weirdness and that's that bit of weirdness that you need in a cheap trick song which is probably why it wasn't a bigger hit because People like me, BJ, you, and uh, Robert, we we like it when Cheap Trick gets weird. So, no, I don't. Well, not on this album. Songs. All right, we'll go to the one that's universally hated by everybody. And I'll tell you how uh, I had no intention of buying a doctor, but I saw it for a dollar when it was new. A lot of luxury yep. was not out yet, and I saw it for a buck. And I said, what the <laughs> hell? You know, I do remember seeing It's Only Love, and I was like, what the hell? They're doing the Wang Chung video. It was like they were yeah. ripping off the Wang Chung video. I was like, this is stupid. Which, but, by the way, Ralph, I've got to tell you, I love the video you did for Wang Chung. Everybody oh, have fun right, with your dog. Thank you. My my little I, puppy, ba- Batman. Yeah. What was that? That was my puppy, Batman, that I lost in a breakup. Ah. Uh, uh, Beautiful yeah. dog. You him have the same eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're yeah, because it was one of those Boston Terriers. We both have goofy eyes. Um, but you know, look, I put on the doctor back then when it was new, once, and I was like, okay, <laughs> fuck this album, you know. And then when then when everybody was running around saying the doctor's the worst, I'm like, yeah, you know. But then you know, then I listened to you know, I went back and listened to the the last album. But anyway. Um, when I did the review to this, though, I, I lived with it for a month. I ended up really liking like maybe four cuts on this album a lot. And I was like, that's when I finally realized this is not the worst album. Uh, right. But it is it is a poor album, but it's not as bad uh, as people make it out to be. But then again, you know, I mean, every, so, opinions are subjective. But, um, you know, I dug it. I, I, I dug the first track when I was like listening to it over and over. I was like, this is a good tune, you know? It's up to you. And uh, uh, the title track, somewhat, it's kind of good. It's, it's demented. I like the dementedness of the doctor. And uh, I love the ballad, Take Me to the Top. I thought it was really, really good. And I can't, now looking at the track, I can't really remember the rest. Um, but um, uh, how about you, Ken? When I bought this album, I had them set it aside for me because I couldn't get there the day it came out. So I was like a week and a half late getting it. And later. The, <laughs> and the guy, when I walked in, they had a wall full of them. Okay. And he said, I said, so how is it? Because he liked Cheap Trick. He says, it's not very good. We can't sell this. If you buy the CD, I'll give you the vinyl. Wow. So I got the two for one, and I went home and realized why. (laughs) Uh, 
yeah, almost everything that I loved about this band was not apparent. So, so it never grew on you. Some of the tracks, some of the songs, but the problem is, is the is the same problem I have with uh, "Standing on the Edge," which I love the songs. I hate the drums. You know what right. I mean? The, that that same thing is still affecting us. They really wanted them to be a new wave pop band or something. And, uh, you know, what is really great on here is really great. What is not great is really not great. So there you go. Uh, BJ, what do you think of this album? The is the uh, worst cut in all of Cheap Trick. The, the, the cover is the, the cover. Oh, the, oh, the album cover? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the the doctor suffers from the production is just a complete disaster for a lot of it. So it just destroys it. There are there are plenty of good moments in the songs, you know, but as as a whole the album is just suffers from that horrible production that's really difficult to get past, you know. But yeah, there are some good songs on it. But it was 1986. It's like you look back at 1986 and you're like, what the hell were a lot of these bands thinking? You know? Yeah, it's just, true. A lot of bands went through an identity crisis where they were yeah. following different trends and just, you know, made some regrettable choices and worked with some regrettable producers and had, you know, record companies in their ear. And yeah, it just led to a lot of things that when you look back in retrospect, you're like, what the hell were they thinking? And it's hard to relate to what what the hell how that how could this have happened? But it did. So yeah, yeah you're listening to that album. I, I I hear a lot of record company uh, suggestions. Just listening to it, you know, you guys right. need to do this, need to do that. Robert, what do you think of the doctor? Uh, I think it's pretty bad. I uh, I think uh, like I think everyone's kind of saying that there are some good songs on it. I like it's up to you. I like it's only love. Take Me to the Top, obviously, was a recast when we get to the Silver concert and we get to really see what it's all about. But, yeah. but you know, my problem with Kiss Me Red, and I I didn't go into as much detail on this as, as I probably wanted to, but it's not that it's a bad cover of a pop song. It's not that it's a, you know, a, a, or even a cover of a bad pop song. It's a cover of a fake pop song, you know, because it was for like a TV show about a pop band. So it's not like it was ever a real song by a real band. It's a fake song kind of created specifically for like a TV sitcom. And I don't think they were, I don't think they were covering it ironically. So it just has no place on a cheap trick record. There's no reason when you got guys as talented as Rick Nielsen as a songwriter that you're covering, you know, a, a song that's not even, an original by real songwriters or a real song by a real band. Just a well, terrible decision. All right. It's one of Robert, those hit factory question. songs. What? What was that? It's one of those hit factory songs. The guys that wrote it are the guys that wrote Like a Virgin and True Colors and lots yeah. of right. stuff, you know. Right, but they did write it specifically for a TV show, which I think means that their John intentions Stevens. possibly are a little different than just writing a hit song for Madonna. Right? Like, that's made to... to that's written to be played on the radio. This is just made to sound like it's a song that could be played on the radio in a TV show. Mm -hmm. That's too meta. So uh, would Kiss Kiss Me Red be your least favorite, Robert? I I I wouldn't even I don't even consider it a song. So, <laughs> yeah. and what and what would be your favorite? Uh, probably well. You know, if I say take take me to the top, it's really based on the silver concert. So I would go with um, probably it's up to you, or, or uh, I like it's only love a lot. Okay, um, so your answer is it's only love. Um, I'm picking answers for you, Robert. Sure, uh, Ken. Yeah, Ken. How about you? Well, the, I'm going to go with take me to the top is the one that I love. It's a really good songwriting. It's a lot of great stuff there. And it doesn't hurt that it was also on the Silver concert. But uh, uh, It's Only Love is okay, but I think that uh, Take Me to the Top is a better song. And uh, 
God, there's so many to choose from in the shit category. Uh, do we go with bad girls go to heaven or good, <laughs> oh, good yeah. girls go, bad girls go everywhere or man, you lip you later. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to go with man, you lip you later. <laughs> wait, wait, is, isn't that the one with uh, rear, rear, rear viewer, rear view mirror romance? I, I can never yeah. say that. Probably. Yeah, that's on it. Yeah, that one's on. Fuck that song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, BJ. I guess my my favorite is "It's Up to You," even though the production is shit. It's a really good song. Um, and my least favorite is definitely "Man You Lip You Later." <laughs> that is bad shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I do remember that. Like like rock all night. I remember that one. Um, yeah. my, my favorite is take me to the top and, um, I don't, and, and it's like the one song on here that doesn't even bother me production wise. I just, I don't know. I just love the way it sounds on the album. Um, I got to go recheck silver, even though I watched silver the other day. I love that show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, BJ I was there. Was there. Yeah. <laughs> even though they played who the king, but, um, anyway, so, and yeah, manipulator, man. Um, <laughs> And you know what's funny is I saw an interview on YouTube like maybe a couple of years ago with Cheap Trick, and they were asking each member, "What is your favorite Cheap Trick song?" And Bunny said, "Kiss Me Red," uh, <laughs> with yeah. with a real serious face, like. And I was like, "Really? <laughs> wow!" And I believed it. Then later on, I realized, "Oh yeah, Cheap Trick always lies in interviews." You know. <laughs> All right, enough yapping. We're gonna have a uh, part three uh, next week. Uh, where yes. we continue going because there's this is gonna be a far four part episode. Uh, you guys enjoying yourself so far? Yes. Uh, this, this is Mac. Uh-huh. <laughs> this, this is the most fun you can have with your pants on. Believe me, I can have fun with my pants on. Somebody has their uh, pants on. <laughs> only you. Ooh. You're the only one without pants there, Robert. What the hell are you doing over there? I'm Canadian. <laughs> we will be okay. back on on what part three, right, Ralph? Uh, yeah, we'll be back on part three, and it's wild that this guy that lives in Canada is the one with his pants off. Ain't it cold <laughs> up there? I've got long johns. Yeah, he's freezing. Nobody hurts pants. <laughs> I'm sure it's shriveled like a little raisin by now, right? Take off, eh? <laughs> All right. Till next week, part three. Of the cheap trick discography, and it gets nasty. So tune in, all right? Smack him a gob. Smack him a gob. <laughs> all right, the guys are gone, and I came inside the vault. Yes. I'm going to leave you with this. It is what we discussed earlier, where Cheap Trick played with Bon Scott and Angus Young, and I didn't know Malcolm Young was also on the stage. And they also mentioned uh, when they played this song on the song Love Come Tumbling Down off uh, All Shook Up. So thanks for all that listen. And uh, please come back next week for part three of the Cheap Trick discography. Enjoy. Schmack them a gob.